If you're a solo creator like me, you know that editing can be the most challenging and time-consuming part of producing a podcast. And if you're just starting out, you might not be sure where to begin with editing. Well, I produce a video and audio episode of my podcast every week, and I do it in under an hour. So in this video, I'm going to go step by step on the tools you can use to edit, use AI to expedite your process, what you should edit out, content you should add in to make it more visually engaging, and how to make your show compelling and shareable in the edit. Now, tip number one actually happens before you even record, because more planning equals less editing. For every episode of our show, I have a Notion document here, and you can see all the past episodes we've planned. And if I go to our last episode note, you'll see we have a research section, a show outline with everything we're going to talk about, plus links to the articles that we'll discuss. And this will also be the run of show that I use while we're recording. You can see here as we're recording the podcast, You'll see my Notion document right next to Riverside as I'm recording with my co-host, and it's what we refer to the entire time. And not only planning the content, but planning the structure of your show, what segments, how will you transition, who's in charge of transitioning, all of that is going to help the editing be way less. I'll talk more about structuring your show in step five, so stay tuned. Number two, I record with the edit in mind, meaning I try to share as many visuals, screen shares, media board files that I can while we record, because that'll get edited for me using Riverside. Just as an example, I'll jump into my studio like we're recording a new episode, choose my camera, mic, and speaker. Then in my preparation, if there's any video or audio clips I want to share, I upload those to the media board here on the right-hand side. Once they're uploaded here, they'll stay until I remove them. And then I can play a file. I can preview it down here in the media board and then play it live. And this will actually show up in the editor. Riverside will put it together for me where me and my co-hosts go small picture in picture. This video plays large and in focus. And then I don't have to edit that in later. Because I did it in the recording, the edit is already done for me. By the way, I did an entire video on how to use Notion to plan your podcast and videos. Check that out above and the links in the description. Now, in addition to media board files, I share my screen often with websites or other things that we're discussing. To keep that organized, here in Safari on a Mac, I actually create tab groups. And you'll see I have a group for every episode. Then when we're recording the podcast here, I'll go to the screen share tool, which Riverside records in HD quality every time you screen share. Plus it's a local recording, so no bandwidth slowdowns or freezes are going to affect your recording for your video or your screen shares. And when I do that while we record, this gets put together for me in the editor as well, which I'll show you in a second. Number three, I use several AI tools to give me a head start in editing. These are all my episodes recorded in Riverside. Let's jump into one and then I'll go up to create and create a new edit. Now the first thing I do is go up to the AI producer tool here and I automatically remove pauses. Now, the great thing about Riverside's remove silence or pause feature is you can choose what kind of pace you want. When I'm doing social media clips, I'll choose the fastest pace to remove any semblance of silence. But for our full length episodes, I'll go about here. That removes longer silences, but still helps keeps a natural pace to the conversation. I'll also remove all filler words. That's a one click apply as well. Then if you wanna ask the Riverside AI producer, is there any fluff, rabbit trails, or superfluous content I should cut out? You can use our find fluff feature. It'll tell you this portion and it might be a rabbit trail, might be small talk. So just delete that part. And it will suggest multiple places to make sure the most valuable content is right where it should be. Now, if I go back to that AI producer, I will also apply smart mute. That will mute everyone's track when they're not speaking, helps cut down on background noise and just cleans up the audio. And finally, our smart layouts feature here will focus on the active speaker throughout the recording. Now it'll focus on me and my co-host during in-between moments or if we're laughing, just focus on me or him when we're talking solo. And it gives me that multi-cam look with just a click. So that's giving me a huge head start in editing the show. Now I'll also apply my brand, which you can save here in our brand toolkit. This includes a background image, how you like your text styled, a color palette that matches your show. You can choose if you want animated captions or just when you apply it to a vertical video like 9x16. And when I click apply brand, it just does all of that in a second. So now I've branded the video, all silences and filler words are removed, tracks are muted when someone's not speaking, and that's just saved me hours of time right there. Number four, what happened to all those visuals I shared while we were recording? Well, this step is easy because it's already done for me. Anytime I shared my screen, Riverside puts it together automatically and switches to that. And if I wanted to, I can go in and show me and my co-host as picture in picture, and I can get that look with just a few clicks. So I'll go through, check out all the screen shares, 
And just like that, it's all ready to go. Riverside put it together for me. I have all those visuals from screen shares and media board files, and I can move on to the next step. Number five is structuring your show. Does it have a logical progression? Will new listeners and viewers be able to follow along in the different segments? And what I like to include both in the video and audio version of my podcast are chapters. Now I'll use these chapters in the show notes for the audio version of my podcast, and these timestamps will actually be clickable or tappable when someone's listening, even in Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And then here on the video version for YouTube, you can go in and actually navigate by chapters here, and that happens just by copy and pasting chapter timestamps here in the video description. Well, the great part is Riverside does that for you automatically as well. You'll see here at the timeline at the bottom, Riverside has automatically added a bunch of chapter markers with the content already titled. Now I can go in and remove some chapters if I'd like, or I can even add some. I can do that by clicking the Add Chapter tool here on the left, or I can click anywhere in the transcript, which you get every time you record a podcast, click Add, and then choose Chapter here. Now, once you have all the chapters properly labeled, maybe you actually want to remove a whole section because it didn't have to do with the rest of the episode or there was too much small talk. Well, instead of removing chapter, you can choose Delete Content, and you'll delete actually the video and audio from this edit with that entire chapter. Now, editing in Riverside is non-destructive, so you can always undo or just start over with your full-length recording. And if you wanna copy those chapters into your YouTube video description or podcast show notes, just click the three dots here and then click Copy Chapters List. And now you can paste it wherever you'd like. Number six, let's get to granularly editing our content. Now, maybe we wanted to add some visuals. A great place to do that would be the intro, because especially on YouTube, and you can share a video on Spotify too, those visuals at the beginning are really gonna help. And you can do that right here in the Riverside Editor as well. I'll click and highlight some text here in the transcript, and then I can click Add Video, or I can also go over to the Video tool here on the right-hand side, and now upload a video clip from my computer, or search for royalty-free videos that you can use in any recording or podcast you want. Maybe I'll search for iPad. Here's a B-roll clip here. I'll click it, expand it to fill the frame, and now you'll see that video clip is overlaid on the recording right here. I can preview that. It'll go from me to the B-roll clip, and that was that fast, all here in the Riverside Editor. I can drag it around to replace it or drag the in and out point. And if you need to adjust the volume of any B-roll clip, because it has audio and you want to mute it, just click the speaker icon and drag it to zero. Now I can add multiple video clips throughout my recording. But let's get even more detailed. And if we want to make sure the audio is pristine for our podcast, because we publish to Audio RSS as well, you might want to go up to AI Producer, and if there was any background noise or someone used a built-in microphone like on their iPhone or laptop, you can go to Magic Audio and actually apply it to one or all tracks in your recording. And you can even adjust the percentage that Magic Audio is applied to make sure it doesn't sound too processed, but still makes it sound studio quality. But for really detailed editing, you can open the separate track editor, which is right here, expand the tracks, and then you'll see every participant's audio separated individually. So now I can really zoom in, and if there's a sound or a laugh that maybe I want to cut out so I can hear one person's joke, I can drag these muted sections and clean up the audio that detail. Maybe I want to expand some of these tracks to make sure that it's not cut off or unmuted, and I can go through the entire clip making these granular edits to the audio version of the show. And of course, this applies to the video as well. And that's a huge benefit when you record and edit with Riverside, as you edit here, you're doing both. You're editing the video and audio, and it's easy to export both formats at the same time. I'll show you that in a second. After I'm done making all the granular changes to the audio that I want, I'll collapse those tracks, and we're almost finished. Remember, you can also edit via the transcript here in Riverside, so if there's a portion you want to cut, a sentence or a word, you can just select the text, click the trash can, and you've edited your video and audio. We make it that simple. Now, number seven, for the finishing touches, maybe we want to add some intro music to our podcast. Well, you can add background music throughout, either by clicking Add Music down here in the timeline, or click the Music tool here on the right. Search, you can upload a piece of audio, or browse our royalty-free audio library, and you can add whatever you'd like. I'll add an intro that I uploaded here, and you'll see it appear down here in the timeline. Now I can click the three dots, adjust the volume and effects, I want to make sure that it's low enough for us to be heard, and then fade in and fade out. Now we have podcast intro music, and we can add music in other places, just by moving the playhead here in the editor, opening the music tab, I'll click another music track, and now we can have music for our ad breaks, music to transition to different sections, and more. Also, in addition to video overlays and B-roll, you can add image overlays using the image tool here, 
upload your own images or search for royalty free. We're talking about the Nintendo Switch, so maybe I'll search for video game. Oh, there's a picture of a Nintendo Switch. I can expand it to fill the frame and you can add image overlays throughout your recording. And if we wanted to add those animated captions, that's just one click. Click captions here on the right hand side, choose from many styles that we have available and then save your favorite style so it's easy to apply later. And now we have animated captions, image overlays, all of our screen grabs and media board shares during recording is there and we're switching between cameras because we applied our smart scenes at the beginning. You can also add text overlays using the text tool here. Great for chapters, someone's name like a lower third and more. And finally, when we're ready to export, we can get the video and audio version right at the same time. I'll go up to export here in the top right, and then we can export up to 4K. Even if you only recorded 1080p per guest during the recording, you can still do 4K here, export the video, then you can jump right back in to keep all the edits you just made and export the audio. I'll click keep editing right here, then go back up to export, choose audio. For a podcast host, we'll choose MP3, and then I can export the audio only at the same time. Now I can download the video and audio file once that export is processed and we're ready to publish. Speaking of publishing, where are all the places you should publish your podcast? Well, obviously if you do video and we recommend you do, publish on YouTube. YouTube is an excellent place to grow your show for discoverability, people can subscribe, and you can monetize using YouTube's partner program. You can also upload that same video version to Spotify for creators. You can upload both audio and video here, and then someone can go back and forth between listening or watching your podcast all here in Spotify. And in your show notes, copy and paste that chapter list like I showed you before, and that shows up here in Spotify, and someone can navigate that way as well. Then that MP3 file, publish it to your podcast host. I use Transistor for my podcast, Primary Technology, and that'll distribute to Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and all the third-party podcast apps. So that's a look at how to plan, record, and edit your podcast quickly using AI tools and the awesome editor in Riverside. If you have any questions, leave comments below this video, but be sure to subscribe to the Riverside channel and hit that like button. I have lots of tips on growing your podcast, monetizing, and more, which if you want to learn about monetizing your podcast, even with only hundreds of downloads, check out this video right here, where I talk about five ways you can monetize right now. And if you want to add video to your podcast, but you're not sure where to start, I did a video on gear, lighting, and doing the whole setup. Even if all you have is your phone, you can start a video podcast today. You can check out this video right here, where I walk you through it. Thanks for tuning in. We can't wait to see the podcast you create.